Yo, what's up, everybody? What's up, YouTube? And I'm Bad Wolf. I know the video I'm gonna do for this um movie, y'all. Yeah, and it's kind of early, but um, yeah, I probably do you know a little story about all three, you know, you know about the rapper um Mo three real quick. The story I talk about, you know, the late rapper Mo three, and, and you know in his career and depth. So here we go. Okay, Melvin Abdul Noble Jr. as Mo three was born in Dallas, Texas in, in 1992. He was born on the East McKinley, Texas, but moved to North Dallas when he spent his whole life there. My well, three life was him living in the ghetto to where his passion was on making a career on being a rap superstar, you know, out of the city and how he, in, in, you know, and how the lore of the street life can be tipping to more three how he started to get involved based in street life and how to where he he'll be in our prison but Mev Mo as Mo three had a gift for him to go after his vision. Mo three, you know, started getting into music to when he released his debut album on um, Miss Tape, Shotters in twenty fourteen. And the same year Mo three released his single Hold Your Tone with the famous Tessa rapper Mr. Lucy. He started to get a lot of buzz throughout the state of Texas and basically the down south region. He started to get a lot of fame throughout his music career, but sometimes all that can come with a price by being too real for the industry and how how it could be you know a gift and curse. And he started to release a lot of mixtapes and albums like Shadows, Shadows Reloaded. Four Diamonds, Gangsta Love Part 1, Shotters 3.0, Gangsta Grill, and Osama. But Mo3 started to get signed with Boosie at, at the time. Him and Boosie had a bun to where him and, and Boosie were started, you know, doing songs together in videos. And Mo3 had at least a album called Badass with Boosie Badass. You know, after that history, you know, but. I said with all that success and popularity, but three started to try a lot of the wrong people with, you know, a lot of enemies and you know, and, you know, you know, a lot of ops, you know, that's you know, wanting him dead. But sometimes all that come with the fame of being a rapper, but you know, it's the ops, but but Mo three didn't pay attention to what can happen and how he started beefing with a lot of um Dallas Texas rappers like um Yellow Busy and you know, you know, it's about the rappers, you know, from that city he's from, but okay, next is you know, on on how he got killed, so next be death, so okay, on a faithful day on November 11, 2020, you know, at age of 28 years old, Mo3 was driving on the Interstate 35 in Dallas to where it was a lot of traffic, and he stopped the car, um, you know, and Car in intent of a semi on the center lane and he proceeded to pass a side of the car. But through was shot and killed by a assault rifle by a gunman. People started um uh, I said it was frantic of the um incident on you know about what happened, you know, on, on the interstate. The whole it still was shut down and blocked off, but my three um lavish body was on the interstate. Where people start to take pictures of his body and some of the, some of the video is on um you know based on YouTube you know based on internet on um, but you know it was sad that how he was gunned down in his own city. I believe it was type of killing that was already in beef and how and how he got killed. You know, he's a father of three kids and about you know I said around that year two suspects was arrested for his for his murder. 22 year old Kawan Detrail White was arrested on December 9th of 2020. And, like, some say he killed my three over female and how they tried him down to get murdered. But, you know, by the time Kawan was dating a transgender woman, but, you know, it was some sources that led to his death. But, um, yeah, my thought about three's death was a, you know, it was a uh, type of um treasure killing. How like you know on, on how they track him down. 
of how they killed them off of, you know, like things did, but like, um, and yeah. So I guess that was more of a death deck. You know, it was more of a tragic death and how he was killed. You know, he was driving and somehow, you know, you know how they gunned him down. But yeah, I feel like his death is a type of death deck and happens to me a rapper who, you know, somebody who can't you know, leave the streets alone or beef or how things can turn out tragic, deadly. But yeah, I feel like my three's life was basically cut short or because, you know, like, Sometimes we feel like you are a top rapper in your city means that folks might want to kill you, you know, folks want to see you dead, folks want to see you get, you know, get, you know, arrested, murdered, shot up, and killed, but, yeah, I feel like his death is a tragic one, how, like, like, some people in Texas felt like his death was basically a result of, from, you know, I say of the, basically, the conflict that happened, you know, the beat that started, the conflict start to, you know, grow and grow a lot more and how his death has, you know, it, you know, uh, yeah, I feel like his death, I said, was a tragic end to his life and how his, his death had felt like, like, folks felt like his death it was a tragic end, how they killed him off of him being, you know, I said, with a female or it be over jealousy hate, but yeah, I feel like, you know, his death is kind of more affected. The whole, um, you know, dad's head rap scene, like, you know, that Tessa had a lot of rappers from there, like, um, you know, um, you know, I put to the Lodi, and, uh, you know, you know, I put to him, you know, he had, he had to commit suicide, um, last month, you know, by mail, yeah, yeah, I took rap from, um, dad Tessa is dead, like, my dude was killed last year, and, um, you know, and, um, the Lodi was, had, you know, had died, you know, but, um, I feel like the whole rap scene out there, kind of more, you know, it kind of went, went downhill, because I rap, I, um, you know, some rappers was killed, some guy, you know, involved with the drama with beef, but, yeah, I feel like his death is affecting the whole rap scene as a whole idea, but, so I think people need to, you know, learn how to always quit beefing all the time, quit beefing, you know, with your odds, like, you know, like, some odds came with the king, Kill you off of you know what you did prior to the um you know beef that happened, but yeah, I feel like beef can starts over you know like you know anything can happen. Beef can start over uh, you know like over female, or beef can start over female, and how beef can start with you know a lot of things that can result in jealousy. Though how jealousy can be number one root is how his death you know can be a root of um jealousy though. You know, a lot of teaching that had started out there, but, um, yeah, I think, um, I think Boosie, you know, was a fan of him. I think Boosie, you know, kind of knew that his, um, you know, his death had fit the Boosie, you know, Boosie, though, but, um, yeah, Boosie went to that test his last year and how, I mean, something real about that, um, you know, about how, um, you know, um, I said on how Boosie was shot. In the leg, how you know, you know, who's driving the same, um, you know, same aerial, you know, on how the boys had drove down there to attend his funeral, and how you know, on how the boys had drove to a different area, and how they kind of, you know, shine them up, you know, but um, yeah, like, you know, same, same, um, scenario on how folks get killed, you know, all because it'd be a lot of, you know, teaching. You know, bad blood going on with the, um, you know, I said with the whole, um, the rap scene in Texas, but, like, you know, I feel like it be, it, yeah, I feel like it be kind of, like, more of a, you know, things where, like, you know, once a rapper dies, you don't see the mistake, like, you know, the whole vibe, the whole tension can, you know, explode to, you know, bloodshed and, you know, gunplay, but, you know, and, you know, in the vibe scene, it can happen, but, like, you know, I feel like, um, uh, you know, that was him. You know, they lost a legend. You know, they lost a tie you um, you know, a father figure, you know, a father, a rapper, um, you know, someone you can really can, you know, lift up your spirits, you know. You know, if you're down, you know, if you are, you know, struggling, whatever, but yeah, I think my three death affected Tessas as a whole I do. Yeah, other people who doing you know, uh that's a lot of you know, visuals for his death and how his death 
had fed the whole um, hip hop rap scene, you know, on how he's, you know, uh, I don't know. I think rappers should learn how to always, you know, be careful nowadays, you know. Being in the streets not fun at all, you know. Being in the street life is not fun, you know. It comes with a lot of risky behaviors, like, you know, things could happen to you, but yeah, I feel like, you know, my three death have affected people and how his kids is going to live life without him, you know, um, around or how his kids are going to have the father for real, but you know, I feel like, yeah, I feel like, yeah, man, but, yeah, I feel like his death has affected people, though, so. So as a whole, but so you know, it's kind of sad. Though, you, you know that he lost his life. To, you know, of, you know, over being killed like that. You know, on the but so, so, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. So peace, Amari, and take care.